Hey guys, how are you doing? Welcome back down to the workshop. Hope you're well, hope you're having a good weekend. Uh, finally managed to get this uh, video put together for you. This is the God of War axe I did a while back. Again, I don't have the item here because it's already been posted, but I will put a picture up uh, this side. Um, we've got a couple more on the way, uh, a sword on the way and a stab safe spear on the way. Uh, as soon as I can get a chance to get to them, it's getting pretty busy at the moment, which is good. Uh, don't forget, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and... Uh, subscribe it all helps me out all helps me keep building in here for you uh, if you really want to help me out you can join me on patreon it's a dollar a month or however much you want to donate you can talk to us uh, get in touch and hang out with us in twitch as well which is most weekdays over at twitch uh, tv twitch dot tv slash ttc craftworks uh, we just hang out chill have a laugh usually pick on me but yeah <laughs> So yeah, come and join us, have a laugh. But uh, yeah, let's uh, get straight on into this, shall we? Okay, to build this axe, I'm going to be using a 10 mil carbon fiber core, which I've already pre-scratched up with some sandpaper to make the glue adhere to it a little bit better. Um, then I'm using some 8 mil um, craft foam, 45 gram density. As you can see, I'm just gluing. Once you put your first layer on, make sure you just trim off the edge. You don't need to go sanding it down too much because you're going to go over it, but just make sure it's not bulging out so the second layer can go on nice and smooth. Here you can see me bulking up one side at the top of the shaft. This is good to create the S-shaped uh, illusion. Now this is a straight core so we can't just curve it. So I'm building up the top section on one side and the bottom section on the opposite side and then I can trim it to make it look like there's an S-curve there. With the top side now all built up to the width I need, I don't want to go too big because I'm just going to chamfer this in, I've then started building up on the bottom. So I'm just doing the same thing, just on the opposite side on the bottom. And I'm just adding a couple of layers to it and then I'll chamfer it smooth. Once I have both the top and the bottom to the width that I needed, I'm going to then chamfer the middle section so it looks like it's bending into the other side and you do this on both sides so it looks like it's a nice shaped S. Now the bottom of the shaft actually angles out in the same sort of direction as the top so we're just going to put a couple of layers on the bottom again opposite side to what you've just done and we're going to build that up a little bit and then we're going to chamfer it smooth and just create like a little curve at the bottom.
Now that we're happy with the shape and the curve that we have, you can go on with the Dremel and create that nice wood grain effect uh, using the tip of the Dremel, just on an angle, just nice little scoots up and down, and that gives you a lovely textured effect. Here you can see me adding more foam to the bottom because I need the, the butt of the uh, weapon to be a lot bigger because there's actually a design that goes on the, on the sides of it. So I'm just adding a little bit more bulk here and then we'll trim it down. Once I'm happy with the size that I need at the bottom, I'm just adding a 2 mil skin just to give it a nice smooth skin that I can work from with no uh, joint lines of, with glue showing through or anything like that. So just put a 2 mil skin over it, join it up nicely and then we can put on the pattern. Once I'm happy with the shape and the skin on the bottom, I'm using a template here that I'm drawing up by hand using reference images on the computer. Now this will be put scaled up and used to put over the uh, foam so then I can draw a template on it and then burn in the, uh, the design I need. Now we're on to the head. As you can see here, I'm building up a template ready to be used uh, using reference images on the computer again. Uh, we'll be using the shaft as a sizing guide to make sure it fits nice and smooth. You don't want to oversize it. And we'll be transferring this to foam, cutting out five or six of these just to get the width that we need. And we're going to go a little bit wider than the actual shaft width. Once you've cut out five of these pieces that will make the head up of your axe, don't forget to use your shaft as a marking up piece. Draw out the centre column, that you're going to, centre core piece that you're going to cut out on one of these. And then you're going to glue this to the shaft and then we're going to add some reinforcement pieces.
Now for the reinforcement pieces I'm using some nylon cloth here which I've glued up and I'm just going to glue over the core where it meets the rest of the foam and a little bit into the, the head and the back of it and down the shaft. This is going to give us a nice comfortable seal and it's going to make sure there's no play in the core on the inside. With both sides fully reinforced we can start adding the sides of the foam to make the head. Uh, now I think I cut out five on this uh, which gives me a slight width increase compared to the shaft which we're going to use later on as part of the effect. Make sure you squash all this down try and get all the trapped air out of it. Here you see me using a rolling pin and this is what I use to make sure it all seals down. Once you have all the parts glued up, then you can start trimming up the edges. Now, if you don't like trimming them up and leaving uh, a bit of a mess without sanding, you've got to sand it. Or you can add an extra piece of foam onto the top to hide up all those join lines. I do this on the bottom just to give it a little bit of a tidy, but uh, on the top I just tend to sand it smooth. Once we've got the tops and the bottoms all trimmed out, you can then create the chamfer or the blade edges as you need on the front and the back. Uh, well, there will be other details on here, but as now, just make the chamfers nice and smooth and that gives you something to work with and then we can uh, start on the details on the head. Once you've smoothed out all the chamfers, then we can start on the details on the head. Here you can see I've added a collar just underneath the main head, where the wood grain and the head would meet. And then I've added another 8mm foam uh, layer just up the centre, so it's quite bulgy at the base, goes narrow at the top. This is going to add a bit of bulk to it, we're going to chamfer this down nice and smooth, and blend it into the blade so it looks like it's actually part of the head, and it's just wrapped around this wooden shaft. For the top of the head I'm just cutting out some 8mm spikes and just gluing them around the actual wooden shaft section that I've added on the top. This was just a couple of layers built up on top and shaped to make it look like wood just like we did before and then I added these 8mm spikes on for all four corners. Uh, I apologise for missing some of it on the video here, I wasn't watching where the camera was. Now to finish off the details on the shaft and the headpiece joining section, we're going to use some 8mm uh, coming off the head first and then we're going to chamfer that down and we're going to use 5mm uh, uh, for a long section which goes onto the shaft. Now that you'll have to sand smooth the 8mm down to the 5mm to make it a nice smooth join and uh, then we can add any details we need to on there.
Now for the head details, I go back to our template that we use to make the headpiece with, and I transfer all the reference images that I need to onto this template, so I've got the actual design I need. Now what I'm going to do here, I cut out, we're using a sharp blade, the lines, not all of the lines, just some of them, so I'm missing little sections, so I don't loot, cut up the entire piece of paper, and through those lines I can then use the pen and make uh, markings which outline everywhere I need to go and I can just join those lines up, they're only small gaps and you know exactly where you need to go with your burner. Okay, once we're actually happy with the, sh the size, the shape and all the details, we can heat seal it with a heat gun and then latex it. Now, obviously for a LARP weapon, it needs to be latex, not so with a, a cosplay weapon. However, it will add a very nice smooth finish. So once you put a minimum of six coats of latex on it, you can then start painting it. Now, I'm not gonna show you how I do all the painting. Um, you've seen all my videos before, or hopefully you've seen those videos and you know exactly how I do it. Uh, I will do a quick brief down because some of you have been asking for a few more details. Uh, so here I'm going to start on the wood effect. I'm just lightening up the dark foam um, underneath by putting a yellow coat on. Then I'll use a dark brown and then a light brown and I'll use contrast and then blend them because wood is not uniform. It has a grain, it has contrast, it has different textures and they don't look identical all the way down, it's different. So I blend it in to give me that bit of randomness. After I've done the light and dark brown coats, I dry it off and then I use a very dark brown wash that I rub down the whole shaft into all the nooks and crannies and then I gently wipe it down leaving all the dark spots in the ingrained parts of the shaft. I then go over it with a little bit of dry brushing with some lighter stuff just to give it some highlights. So you've got low dark textures, you've also got highlight textures and then I add the steel effect onto the head. Now this was done with just a basic uh, silver acrylic with some flexi paint and then we'll go back in with some chrome and just some highlights and give it a brush off on an angle so it looks like the, the metal has been grained in or filed in with a stone or a file.
with the steel effect now finished we're going on to the uh, glowing effect of the axe now the lines we burnt into the foam and then obviously we latexed over them so they're sealed we then use a nice dark blue go through every line i know it's tedious but you've got to do it you've got to go through every line and then you've got to go over it again with a lighter blue and then finally a very thin line of white now this will give you the effect that it's actually glowing uh, any other details you've got are some little um, like button effects on the the shaft near the head and they were used with a little gold leaf uh, paint and then the same blue white effect to give it the glow that we need The final touches on the axe will be a little bit of weathering using a little bit of uh, smoke that I use. It's just like a watered down black wash going through all the edges and uh, just highlighting any details really. Then let that dry and it's varnish using Isoflex and uh, make sure you use a mask with that guys. So there you have it guys, that's the uh, God of War Axe all done and dusted. I hope you've enjoyed the video, if you did please give it a thumbs up and think about subscribing, it really does help me out and I appreciate it. Uh, it keeps me wanting to do these videos for you because it's a lot of work to go into these videos, it may not seem like it but it is, and uh, obviously I've got to try and fit this in with the other work that we're doing as well. But uh, I hope you enjoyed it, I hope they inspire you to have a go and build your own things. Uh, don't forget to join us on Twitch during the week if you can and uh, we have a discord you can more than welcome to hang out in there we do all sorts of crazy stuff around but uh, yeah that's it for this one guys I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you on the next one cheers guys bye